Hey, fish people, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about an interesting looking fish, the Pinocchio Whiptail Catfish. Now, the Whiptail Catfish, or the uh, Latin name if you prefer, uh, they are found in the wild in countries like Guiana, French Guinea, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil, uh, so, you know, they're a South American Amazon River Basin catfish here. Uh, they're also found in sandy soil where they typically feed on worms and micro crustaceans, which will come in handy later on when we talk about feeding and substrates for these guys. Now, they're going to get just over five inches. Uh, the range is between five and a quarter and five and a half. So if you want to plan on a six inch catfish, there you go, but five, five and a quarter seems to be the average size for these guys. So tank size, you could probably get away with a 20 gallon. Uh, I would probably do a 30 personally, but you know, as long as you have a long and wider tank than a, you know, short and tall one, you're going to be just fine. So for a water temperature wise, you're looking at about 75 to 82. So still within that typical community tank setting and a pH of six to seven, which is still within that range. Now you'll of course want a sandy substrate with these guys, something that's soft and sandy for them because most of these are going to be wild caught. In fact, the majority of these that you're going to find will be wild caught and in the wild, they're used to sandy substrates where they can bury themselves underneath it to hide from predators. So they use it as a disguise. Now they have been bred in captivity, but not in consistent or large numbers. If you wanted to try your hand at it, uh, your best route is going to be just to get a group of five or six of these, just them, keep them in a tank by themselves because your chances of getting a breeding pair out of that would be much better and more likely to have happen versus if you're going to put a bunch in a tank with other fish. You're also going to want to feed them a variety of a diet mostly live foods, things that they've eaten in the wild. So, you know, micro crustaceans and live worms. And you're going to want to do at least a weekly water change of about 50 to 60% to, of course, simulate water levels dropping and then raising again from rain. Now, that is your best shot at these guys. Uh, I've never personally bred them, so I don't have insight knowledge. This is all based on things I have read on them. Now, they are omnivores, so they're going to be eating mostly in the wild. They're eating things like small invertebrates, micro crustaceans, plant matter, things of that nature. So for these guys in your tank, you're going to want to feed them a freeze dried, a frozen or a live Daphnia blood worm, tube fix worms or earthworms if you want to go that route. I threw all three of those up there because some people can find live easier than they can find frozen or they can find frozen either than live. And if you can't find either one of those, freeze dried is your next best bet. You can also throw in some wafers and stuff. But of course, again, because these are wild caught fish, they may not take to a wafer. So you're going to want to have one of the other options on standby just in case you can't get them to eat a wafer. Now, they can go in a community setting. They are peaceful those shy and somewhat skittish fish. So again, they're going to be hiding in that substrate. So some compatible tank mates for these guys are going to be your small to mid-sized tetras, like the ones that are micro to like maybe two and a half ish inches, nothing huge. Uh, your smaller corridors, so pandas or pygmies, things that again, stay about two, two and a half inches. Your smaller rasboras, your small dwarf cichlids. And then you want to keep things that are smaller and won't outcompete them for food. So you have to think about them being able to get a food source when you're looking at tank mates. So something like a Congo Tetra is not going to work because those guys are super fast swimmers. They're going to get to that food first and very little is going to get down to the bottom. So just think about that when you're looking at tank mates for these guys. Now, overall, I think they're a super cool looking fish that would make a great addition to any community tank or if you want to try an interesting breeding project and try and get things the way that they need it to actually breed and be one of the few people that's been able to breed them in captivity, that would be great to try out if you want to go that route. And they're going to run you roughly about $30 a fish. So for that reason and the ones mentioned above, I'm going to go ahead and give these guys like an 8 out of 10 because they look super cool. But, you know, I'm not one that's going to spend a lot of money on a fish. So as always, thank you all so much for the continued support on all the videos we've been putting out lately. 
Remember to uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've kept the Pinocchio Whiptail Catfish, if you were thinking about keeping one now, or if you just want to say hello. Thank you.